In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at the use of weight painting with particle systems and vertex groups. It's a powerful combination and it's a lot of fun. And since we've been working with vertex groups for a long time now, this will be really straightforward. So I just have a plane in the scene right here that has nothing associated with it yet. So, but what we're, we're going to do is we'll go into edit mode with tab, press W, and we're going to subdivide it quite a few times. All right, I'll just keep doing that. You know, maybe one more. All right, so we have quite a few subdivisions. All right, I'm going to leave edit mode. Now let's go take a look at the object data button, the upside down triangle here, and we'll go look at the vertex groups. And there's no vertex groups associated with it yet. All right, so we'll leave it like that just for a moment. All right, and we're going to go give, give it a particle system. We'll give it a particle system. We'll give it a little bit of life like that. And there you can see it's starting to show up. And I'm going to use, instead of the uh, normal, as far as admitting it like this like I've done in the past like you'll see if I go get a timeline down here I press alt a you can see they're kicking out like that but instead of that I'll set that to zero and I like to work you know in local mode like this now my axis my local axis is pointing in positive z direction so I'll set the value in positive z like this so then when I run the particle system with alt a it essentially does the same thing but it gives me a little bit better control over to what it's doing. Well, so now those particles are being kicked out out of each one of the faces like that. If it had more particles, we'd see quite a few more from each of the, or you could set them out of the vertices like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to control what faces or vertices the particles emanate from, and we'll do that through the vertex groups. Now, normally, setting vertex groups, one of the things you do is we'll go get, we'll call this particle group like this and we have to be in edit mode to change it and you've seen when I use cloth and other things before that I go in and I change the value numerically like this so and actually for me for what I do as a programmer that's actually the ideal way for me to set things is numerically but if you're just doing design work sometimes just doing it through the paintbrush can be a lot more fun it might look difficult but it's so easy that it's almost ridiculous so in here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just set a value of 0. I'm going to turn that into a 0, I will. OK, and I'm going to assign it. So now there's no values on there. and we'll get, If we go into weight paint mode from here, we can see it's all blue. So there's no value set with that whatsoever. And we'll verify that by if we just go into weight paint mode and assign it all to uh, one then if we go to weight paint and it's all red so that means and we use that you know I set something to red one all along a top edge when I want to use cloth at times all right so that's important but let's see let's go back in I'll set it back to zero and then you'll see the real value of weight painting here so now if at a value of zero if I run the particle system like this, the particles are all coming out of here. But I, ha I have this called particle group. So I'm going to go over to the particle system first. I'm going to come down here to the vertex groups. I'm going to go to this density field, click in here, pick the particle group. So now basically the particle system is reliant on the vertex group that's set, or that particular vertex group. So I'll press Alt A now and nothing happens. Well this one little event happens. That, that that happens just because it's telling you there's a particle system associated with it. All right. That's just but that's not really the effect of the painting itself. So now we'll go into weight paint mode and notice everything's all blue like it was before. I'm going to press T on the keyboard and get my paintbrush up. It's painting currently with a value of one which would be all red. So I may, maybe I don't want to paint with that much. I'll just paint a little bit and I won't paint as the full strength and I'll cut the radius down here actually you can cut the radius just by pressing F and moving it like that so I'll make a smaller radius like about this here okay and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start the particle system up alt A alright now it's running and now I'm gonna start painting alright so from here when it comes back around you will understand all right, we need a little more weight. There we go. I let go of the brush, and there it is. Suddenly, I've just painted the vertex groups on, and it's going to 
and the particles come out of everywhere where I've been painting along the way. So yeah, no, it's a it's a really powerful way to work, and the better you know, the more subdivided your mesh is, the better activity you get. And you know, maybe you want to do something. Let me just control Z, Z that if I can. Yeah, I'll control Z that. So you know, next month when I'm going to put up my website, maybe I want to put my website up online, which is going to be what sci-fi animator dot com you know and I'll have my texture maps and everything on there so you know I'll just I'll just paint it on if I could squeeze it in here it's gonna be tight later uh oh it's gonna be close so this obvious sci-fi animator dot com all right so then you could do all kinds of cool effects all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.